In this section we will look at the process of capturing data from a source system and how we can process that data to bring it into a database. On the left is a sample purchase order which captures information about the company, what data, the recipient vendor, as well as the purchase order items. In this scenario the purchase order has been made for 10 product licenses and 10 product maintenance software keys. Assuming we have access to the report, or its corresponding backend raw data, which might be stored in a number of formats such as a flat file in the form of CSV or .txt, a spreadsheet, or recorded directly to another database. For example, some reports may be read-only to protect their contents, and specific access would be required for development purposes. If this is the case, then I would always advise to seek access from the owner of the report or network administrator, providing clear project details and sign off from your project sponsor to carry out this work. Today, most networks will have safeguards in place that can identify if such read-only data is trying to be written off a network without the consent of an owner, and such actions of reading a file without permission could be considered as a data breach in your company. So always best decide with an air of caution and make sure that you have proper clearance. First, we need to identify which fields we want to bring into our database. When reviewing any report, it is always good to check if there is any documentation that was created by the original developer for the report you are reviewing. Most business reports will have a summary page within the report which provides details of the report and the corresponding fields and any formulas used for calculated fields. Likewise, if your end goal is to produce a new report or a dashboard, it is good practice to embed such a report summary in your own reports on how to use the report or dashboard that you have created, or you may provide a link within your report that brings you to an external wiki page where details of the report can be found. If the original developer has provided a report summary and data dictionary, Identifying how the fields are captured, the data types and the relevant groupings, having access to such a report will go a long way to speeding up the process of your own data capture into our new or existing database. However, if no such report is available and we only have the contents of the data report to go on, then we need to work through a process of identifying which fields are relevant to our project. The first step is to identify all relevant fields within the report and to start building our own data dictionary. In the table on the right is listed the source fields identified with a yellow column header and the potential destination fields and table names noted with a green header. These field and table names correspond to the groupings of information we have identified in our purchase order report. We don't need to record calculated fields in this stage as these can be recalculated at a later stage. However, it is important to note these fields for your overall project requirements, as it is very likely that they will be required if a new report or dashboard is due for development. Such calculated fields can be complex in terms of their formulas, and if no formula is available for the calculated fields, then you may need to review with a current user or subject matter expert, SME, for the report to identify the formulas for the calculated fields or attempt to contact the original developer for support. In addition, we want to capture a sample of data and the corresponding data type and length of the fields. If you do not have access to the data dictionary, then at best record a general data type and at a later stage you can choose a more appropriate data type for the field. For example, in the first row is the field product order date. As this is a date field, I've recorded the date format as month, day, year in the column length. However, our new source database records dates in the default system format, which is year, month, date. Knowing the date format will prevent any insertion errors into our new database, as we can specify a format when loading such date fields. If we need to change the date format at a later stage, we can then format the date in any newly generated reports. Most business intelligence tools will allow a user to specify their own preferred date format, and when reading dates from the database, it can reformat the date fields according to the user's preference. For example, 
European dates are in the format day, month, year, while US date format is month, day, year. Moving down the sample of data, there are two fields that have no data present, ship via and the acronym FOB. If there is no sample data, then I would recommend that you refer to the original developer's data dictionary or try to review with a subject matter expert for a sample of data. Lastly, we can also note if all or just some of the fields are required for our project. In the case of our example, I will assume that all fields are relevant. In the majority of cases, even if a handful of fields appear to be irrelevant for your current project, you may want to check if they have potential future use. And if so, it is better to capture the data now than to have to revisit the project at a later stage, which could prove to be a very costly exercise. Therefore, when in doubt, a simple rule of thumb is to say, we will capture all information from the report. Once you have captured your data fields, types and formats from the original report, you should also review the following considerations with regards to the overall data set you will be capturing. For example, is this data to be purchased from a third party data vendor? And if so, how much are we being charged for each field? If you are working with a third party data vendor, that is to provide you with additional customer or merchant demographic details, and they can provide you with 1000 fields of related data. You may not actually require all 1000 fields and specifically just choose which items you want to bring into your database relevant to your project. For example, you may have been asked to identify if a merchant website is set up for e-commerce transactions. And while the third party data vendor can provide you with a multitude of fields related to that merchant, you're only specifically interested in a dozen fields with regards to the merchant's e-commerce website setup. Or maybe the source system you are capturing data from is so large that you can't actually afford to bring in all the fields and replicate such a system. For example, the project owner has asked you to capture data from another source system within your business. And upon review, you've identified that the secondary source system has a very complex and extensive amount of data being captured. For example, this might be a sales or customer support phone system. It may not be possible then to capture all the data from the secondary system, and you will need to decide once again what data is relevant to your project. Lastly, you may also want to identify the quantity and frequency of data that you will be bringing into your table. From this, you can calculate approximately how large your table will be in your new database table. And if you have constraining factors within your database, you then need to decide if you can afford to bring in all the data or not. If it is the case scenario that you do not require all the data for a given frequency and your current database does not meet these demands, then you need to take into account increasing your database size to cater for your new data model that you are presenting. To summarize, when importing or migrating data to a database, there are a large number of factors to take into consideration. As a business data analyst, you should try and consult with as many users of the source system to identify what data is relevant for the business, and also consult with the database administration team to try and approximate the size of the data that you will be bringing into your database. That's all for this section on data migration considerations, and I'll see you in the next section.